Hello everyone. Today I'll be telling you a few things about structured query language. So this tutorial basically targets the very beginners with the database management system. So we are here to discuss the use of SQL in DBMS and how various commands works over here. The DBMS we will be using is MySQL in this and the language is SQL obviously that structured query language. Before I start with SQL, I would like to tell you a few terms that we use while managing databases. So as we know that this language is going to be used on database management system. Now this database management system word means that there is a software which allows us to create a database, to manage the database, to insert new data into it, delete or modify the existing data. And top of all, fetch the data as per our different conditions and requirements. Data, as you know, is the most important thing in today's business and every part of life. So we need to maintain the data in the best possible way. So database is an, is an organized collection of related data and the software which is used to manage that database is database management system. So the basic terms which we use while working with SQL is like a table. Now, what do we mean by a table? Table is basically a collection of data stored in the form of rows and columns. So it is also called as relation technically. So we call it a table or we call it a relation. This is arrangement of data in the form of rows and columns. Now, what do we call rows? Rows are the horizontal ones in a table. And technically, we call them tuples. And columns are the vertical ones and are called technically attributes or you can also call them as fields. So if I'm storing data about students of a school, student is name of my table. And one record of a student which tells like the admission number of the student is 1846. The name is Ankit. Roll number is 246, something like that. So that one row which consists of the whole data of one student becomes a tuple. And all these things like admission number, name, roll number, class, which describes that student are columns or attributes. Now, when we have made a table, we get another two terms called degree and cardinality. So degree is the number of columns we have in a table. So if I am storing data about student wherein I store admission number, name, class, section, roll number. So there are five columns. The degree of the table would be five. Then we have a term called cardinality. Cardinality is number of rows in the table. So number of rows like the heading row is not counted. But then if I have data about 30 students in my table, so I'll be having 30 rows describing those 30 students. And that is called cardinality. So number of rows in a table is cardinality. And number of columns in a table is degree. And another important thing we will be discussing is primary key. So when you make a table, you must have one column in the table which should be able to identify one row exactly. For example, if I have to refer a student, I can refer a student using his or her name. But there is a possibility that there would be more than one student with the same name. I don't want that confusion. So what I do, I call a student with the admission number. So if I have to refer to a student in my database, I will prefer to refer with an admission number so that I get exactly one matching record. So primary key is that attribute which helps us to find exactly one matching record to that. So we say that it is the attribute which helps us identify a single row in the table. So this helps you to identify a single row in the table. It has to be unique. That means no students can have the same admission number. So it has to be unique. It cannot have duplicate values and it can't be left blank. So we cannot leave it blank. So that is the main key over here that whatever primary key you choose and one table can have only one primary key. There cannot be more than one primary keys. 
although we can have a composite key like you are not getting a column in the table which serves the purpose of a primary key so i can combine two or more than two columns together which identifies a single row in that case it would be called composite key but primary key can be only one in a table when you have to think about like which attribute can become a primary key those attributes which comes into my choice are called candidate keys because they are the candidates for becoming a primary key and now out of those candidates i'll choose one of them as primary key the left over are called alternate keys so these are few terms which you should know before starting with sql actually so now to start with sql which is your structured query language a few things about the language are this is that you will be happy to know it is case insensitive so you don't have to matter about or you don't have to take care of that you have to write the command in small letters or in capital letters right anyhow so you write anyhow be it small or capital it will accept your command so that is why we say sql is a case insensitive language then it is a non procedural language the one of few who have a programming background you would be aware about loops if else and all those conditions luckily you don't have all such structures in sql it's a very simple language we don't tell here how to do a thing we just tell what is to be done and sql will do it for you so that's why it's called non procedural language so it is case insensitive it is non procedural that's why it's easy to use and we will be covering the basic three parts of the language that is data definition language which consists of the commands related to the structure of the table like how the table should be created if you have forgotten to add some column and later on you want to add it so for that we can alter the table we can drop the table when it is no longer required so any command which is related with the structure of the table comes under data definition then comes data manipulation language so data manipulation language as the name says is used to manipulate the data stored in the table so it is having the commands which are used to work on the data which we have stored in the table in the table rather than on the structure of the table so if i want to insert a new student in the table i want to modify a student's class or i want to delete a particular student or i want to fetch the data regarding different conditions from the table so for that we have commands in data manipulation language and the third thing we will be covering is transaction control statements now these statements helps you to manage the transaction like whenever we are performing a number of queries on a database we need to save the changes or sometimes we write a wrong query and we need to cancel those changes so that can be done with the help of transaction control statements there are three major statements in this that's commit rollback and save point commit as the name says means save so when you commit something it gets saved permanently we can't cancel or undo it and the other thing is rollback rollback is cancelling the action done by the previous commands the thing which is already committed cannot be rolled back and save point we'll be discussing later in the sessions so these are the three major parts of sql which we will be discussing in the following sessions bye for now thank you hope it was useful for you